Hey everybody, we're here and now I'm gonna be in a good mood. This, there, no, it's gonna be good mood time, good mood time now. We made a new game and it's in early development and I want to, um, I want to tell you all about this cool game that we, we, we haven't made, we are making. And I wanted to do something different with this game because we had such a great experience with early access on Legends of Kalasia and we had so many great responses and I wanted to get everyone involved in this game a lot earlier. So I said, let's, let's show them the game now. Let's show them what it looks like when it's young and ugly and new. And so be cool. There, that's the button. Woo! -hoo! I found the button. Why are we making a game? What What is the point of this? So I, the reason we decided to make a new game is we got a lot of really great comments about Kalasia. For those of you who don't know, for I think most of you who are in the stream right now know, we made a game called Legends of Kalasia. And the idea behind Legends of Kalasia was that we wanted to make a turn-based game and we wanted to make it so that you could play it in a reasonable amount of time. It didn't take you like forever to play it. We wanted it to be multiplayer. We wanted to play it on tablets. And all of that came out great. Um, when we built that, we got done building it and we showed it to the world and the world loved it. And they said, this is really great. I can play a turn-based game. I can play with my friends. I can play a game in an hour and a half. There was lots to love about Legends of Kalasia. And I still love Legends of Kalasia. It's still uh, probably, honestly, out of all of the games I've made in my life, it's probably my favorite game I've ever made. So, I mean, that's, and that's, I made a lot of games. I made like 50 games. So out of 50 games, that's, that's the one I like the best. And it's, you know, the other ones were all cool and shit, but that was the one that's closest to like what I want to play um, in my own taste of games and things. And so when I, uh, when I looked at all of the comments and the feedback and everything that we felt internally and we felt externally about Legends of Kalasia, I said, what is it that we, we wish we could have done? And, you know, a lot of times when you're making a game, you get these comments that are like, you ought to have a map editor. And you're like, well, the entire game is structured in a way that a map editor just, I mean, it's like 15 layers of Photoshop and, and an Excel file and all. I can't do that. This thing that you want, I can't do. And it's really frustrating because you think, you know, this is a cool idea. We should have a map editor. It's not like the people who are giving you the ideas are wrong. It's just, I can't do the thing that you want. And so you're like, huh. So I thought, what if we started over again from scratch and we took all of the lessons that we learned from Legends of Kalasia, all the stuff that we loved, all the stuff that was really good. And then we said, let's fix all of the stuff that we didn't like as much. Let's, let's go back and, and, and do a bunch of the notes and things that we, we wish we could have done in Legends of Kalasia, but doing so would have meant rebuilding the game from scratch. And I wanted to walk through a little bit what some of those things are so that you can kind of put this game into context. Thing two, um, people said, we loved Legends of Kalasia, but we didn't understand it when we played it. Like there, there was a learning curve when you got into the game where you were trying to figure out how do these armies work? How does the combat system work? And in truth, the, the, the combat system was a little bit it was a little bit kind of hard to get your head around. Here's Legends of Kalasia, um, and it's a great game. So like, um, let's do a quick skirmish match and I'll, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Let's just play, we'll do a quick play so we get right into it. What people, people got confused about was things like, hey, I've got this army with Robert and well, what is this army? And you click on the army and you're like, well, okay, Robert's got these skills. And then inside of the army, there's these units and these units have these skills. And people were a little confused about what does, you know, when I have a ballista that does 4220, what does 4220 mean? Well, this 42 is the maximum damage that it could do. So it's actually gonna do between one and 42 points on a bell curve. And 20 is the number of points of damage that it can take. But there was the question of, well, all right, when I attack this army, um, you know, I, I know that he's got 10 of these uh, men at arms, but he's also got, uh, two of these ballista, which one takes damage first and blah, blah, blah. It was, and, and we had a whole system for that and, and figuring out that system was kind of fun and cool, but it was also something that people got, uh, to be, to be blunt. It's something that people got kind of confused about. And it was a barrier when they started the game that they were like, all right, I don't really know how all this works. And we had a lot of wonderful people in the community that would be like, oh, let me teach you how to play. Let me show you how this is all played. 
And I, I thought, wouldn't it be better if we didn't have to do that? <laughs> wouldn't it be better if people would just get in the game and they would look at the units and they would just inherently know this is this is how they work. And 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 to have more of the game be on the main screen. So if I if I go back to Legends of Kalasia, you know, I've got this sort of main map, and I, all right, I want to move this guy here and have him go do stuff. And then when he goes and attacks, there's like a, a separate battle screen. So let's let's play a battle real quick. So I'm gonna go fight these guys over in this 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 village. And when he goes and fights these guys over in this village, we get this this moment where we say, "Oh, okay, here now my ballista fires, and now you know, okay, and that does this damage." And there, there's this whole sort of game inside of a game, and it's fun. I like it. It's cool, but it's also something that you have to learn, and it's it's got kind of a steep learning curve for. And so I said, from the very beginning of Last Regiment. How can we make that learning curve easier? How can we get people so they just hop in and they just know how battle works and they know how things happen? So that was thing two, was how do we make the combat system so that people inherently get the combat system? The third thing, and this was really funny for me, um, when we originally made Legends of Kalasia, I'll be brutally honest, I didn't think real hard about the story. I, that's just a fact. I, I thought... Come on, this is like an advanced version of Risk. People want to move their little armies around. They want to fight. They don't. They don't deeply care about the story. So we didn't. We didn't spend a huge amount of time thinking about some really involved plot or deep characters or anything like that. Because because I genuinely and it, and it's not that I don't care. I I love that kind of stuff. I I I used to be a dungeon master. I love making games and and coming up with all that stuff. I just thought nobody would care. So I thought well, I'm not going to bother with that. And so we didn't. And so we went with a really classic look. We went with really classic characters, you know, and, and people are like, well, what is that guy? I'm like, he's a dwarf, you know, you know, dwarves. They speak with Scottish accents. They smoke pipes. You know what a dwarf is. We could play the game, dude. And I just assumed that was the way things worked, right? But when we actually launched the game, we had all these people who were like, tell me about your lore. Where can I find out more about these places and these? And I, and I was, I was, I was kind of shocked a little bit and was like, wow, you guys want that. I, I didn't, I would love to make this for you, but we didn't. And now, I, you know, and we tried. We, as we went along with Collision, and we continue to try to sort of add story and add stuff to the game, but it was never really a focus of the game. Um, I thought on the next game, why don't we do that? Why don't we have characters that you care about? Why don't we have an interesting story? Why don't we go a little bit away from the, the sort of obvious fantasy tropes let's do some stuff that's a little bit more original let's do some let's create a real world let's do that thing and so sort of the third big change with last regiment is let's actually have a meaningful story and characters that go through this story and 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 do that thing so that was sort of thing three that we wanted to change and we wanted to do in this game thing four um we actually one of the problems with Legends of Kalasia, and I'll, I'll go back to Legends of Kalasia for a minute. And again, I, I'm not ripping on Legends of Kalasia. I love this game. It's a wonderful game. But one of the sort of weaknesses we found out as we continued making the game um, was the way that we had structured the factions. And the way that we structured the factions in Legends of Kalasia um, is there were like, you know, the humans. And then there were the, the, the Feyborn. And there were the Revenant. And if you played the humans, for instance, and you said, well, what units can I use as a, as a, a somewhere in here is, these are, oh, wait, I want that button. So when you played as the humans, you had like, these are the six units you can use as a human. And if you played as a revenant, it was like, these are the six units you can use as a revenant. And it was a little bit limiting in the sense that, you know, I may really like the abilities that this dark knight has, but I can never use these Dark Knight abilities with, for instance, uh, the Man at Arms, because the Man at Arms was a human unit, and the 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 you get where I'm going, right? And I thought, you know, it's really kind of sad because there's probably a lot of interesting synchronicities that people could have found with these not synchronicities. There's a word that people use in Hearthstone, synergy. Yes, that's the word I want. Um, so. I felt like because we limited the player down to you're going to play this faction, this faction, or this faction, you could only ever really find synergies between um, those six units. And since most armies had four stacks anyway, it was really, it, the question wasn't 
which units are you going to take? It was which two units are you not going to take, right? And that you that became a, a thing um, that got, I guess solved is the best word. And, and, and I think, you know, some of the people who are in the stream, like Merlin, I, I think one of the things that, that, that made the game have a shorter lifespan than it needed to have was that some people got in and they felt, you know, Hey, I've, I've solved this. I figured out that the best way to play the humans is to have this unit and this unit, and this is how you play it. And once you, you know, and the problem with a game like this, a strategy game is if you feel you've solved a strategy game, then it's over for you. And you're like, okay, I've, I've had a great time. It's a wonderful game, but I'm done now. And I wanted to make a game where we could consistently be putting in updates and those updates would allow you to constantly meet, find new synergies. I'm going to use that word a lot now because I've, I've remembered it. Um, I can constantly find these new synergies between different kinds of units. And if you look at games that do really, really well, Hearthstone is one of the ones that comes to mind where you guys in chat, everyone's talking about trading card games. This is the magic of trading card games is being, being the guy that finds those cool new synergies. And when a new con when a new thing comes out saying, oh, there's this new card or this new thing, I want to, I want to get this card and I want to use this card because now I can use this card with this other card that I used to have and nobody else figured that out and I'm smarter than them and I won and that's why I'm a badass. That's one of the sort of fun things about trading card games. Um, so we wanted to, we wanted to change the game. So it, it did something like that. 